China, a nation that impresses the world with its space exploits and ambitions. And yes, the whole dryness of winning this new Kansal moon. China has a plan, one that will allow them to conquer the moon. So here we go, here are the nine things you need to know about China's space program. Twice the population of Europe, 1.5 billion inhabitants, that means something to you. For the Chinese people, space represents an ultimate goal, a dream and most importantly, a national pride. China has maintained an incredibly stable course for several decades. The rising superpower has already taken over the surface of the moon with robots in the first half of the 2020s, which has been amazing to watch, but that was the easy part. As a result, the Chinese space program is benefiting from a constant increase in its budget, which officially exceeded $10 billion annually, but probably much more than one away from knowing everything. So you understand, in addition to political stability, we have financial stability, and to be honest, when you want to plan ultra-ambitious projects over the long term, there is nothing better. So, there is no doubt that the Chinese Communist Party will take this opportunity to make a colossal move on the global stage that perfectly aligns with one of their most patriotic celebrations. It is also known that the organization of the space program is placed under the direct authority of the Chinese army and the Communist Party. Let's put aside the political considerations of this regime and be factual. Coordination between the various players in the space sector such as research centers, universities, industries and government agencies are performing pretty well. The result is factual. The space achievements over the past 25 years have been extraordinary. It's been over 50 years to get to the moon, but Americans have a thousand packages. They created the Saturn V, a legendary rocket that mobilized an entire section of their industry and economy for 10 years. The Chinas, for their part, heavy lift rocket of choice will be their upcoming long March 10th. This vehicle is currently under development with a scheduled test flight for 2027. Unlike their much more ambitious and experimental long March 9th concept, the long March 10th leverages existing Chinese rocket technology, namely their YF-100 kerosene engine. And this should allow for the rocket to move rapidly from the development phase to active service. Long March 10th will be a 90-meter tall, three-stage rocket that utilizes two liquid-fueled side boosters in addition to a center core booster. Each of them fitted with seven of the YF-100 engines, Long March 10th is going to look and function very similar to a SpaceX Falcon Heavy, with the capability to deliver 27 metric tons to lunar orbit. China also has a plan to make the three booster cores reusable by having them complete a propulsive landing. Again, very similar to a Falcon Heavy, except instead of landing legs. China wants to catch the booster with the system of tightrope-like wire tethers. In other words, they represent the culmination of decades of development in the field of Chinese space launchers. This Long March 9 is an impressive machine. That's the equivalent of a 30-story building and the mass of more than 300 auto bulbs. It can be compared to its direct competitor. NASA's new moon rocket that recycled the space shuttle, the famous SLS which made its first flight on September 2, 2020. Now, in order to make this all happen, China needs to unlock one. More big piece of the puzzle, a truly gigantic rocket. This is where Long March 9th comes in. A super heavy rocket that China has been planning to develop for over a decade now. But the design has gone through many changes over the years. The Long March 9th was first announced in 2011 and was envisioned as a 103-meter-tall rocket with a massive 9.5 meters in diameter. That's larger than the SLS core stage at 8.4 meters and even larger than the 9-meter diameter Starship. The Long March 9th would launch 140 metric tons of payload to low Earth orbit, 50 tons to lunar injection orbit, and 44 tons to Mars. It's a technologically advanced rocket. It incorporates the latest advances in propulsion, including new generation engines developed entirely in China. This would be achieved by using four chemical side boosters loaded with an insane dual-chamber kerosene burning engine called the YF-130, each twin nozzle engine making 480 tons of thrust. Now, here's where things get confusing. But what is important to understand is that rigorous testing is also required including ground testing of engines, structural strength tests and flight simulations. It also requires exceptional production and assembly facilities. 
they are also under construction. The big news that broke recently is that the Chinese government has decided to completely overhaul the design of the Long March 9. The leaders of the Chinese space agency simply want to transform it into a kind of copy of the Starship. For this, they decided to mobilize all the power of their space industry. Whether public or private. China announces flight to 2030, yes, it's only six years away, and on the scale of such a titanic project, that's very short. When we are able to succeed in building and finance in record time, a space station the size of the old Soviet station and its target and all in a few years. So we are definitely a major space power. This station is called Tiangong, or Celestial Palace in Chinese. But, Chinese engineers are not paid to write rhymes. This station represents a crucial step in China's lunar strategy. This means that it is thanks to her that the necessary technologies. Future lunar missions will be tested. This orbital structure remained less classic. But effective and safe. Like the International Space Station, it consists of several modules. And allows the Tycho notes to get used to the conditions of living away for extended periods. They can also carry out what is considered the most dangerous space activity today. The station also serves as a transmitter for space rendezvous and docking technologies. They too are crucial for future lunar missions. China is really preparing and it is not here to entertain the gallery. Demonstrating mastery of communications comes to a satellite relay. But the big mission that left its mark was Chang 5. In 2020, it brought back the first lunar samples since the Soviet missions. This complex mission was absolutely successful. Precision landing, sample collection, takeoff from the lunar surface. The rendezvous in lunar orbit and the return to Earth. A true feat recognized by all other space nations. China is making impressive technological advances in several critical areas. Here are some striking examples. There are three main components to a successful human landing on the moon. A heavy lift rocket a crew vehicle, and a lunar lander. The next key component is known as the Mengzhou spacecraft. At 26 metric tons, this would be China's largest crew capsule to date and is designed to support a crew of three. For a round trip to the moon, China has already conducted one uncrewed test of this vehicle in 2020 and is expected to begin full operation in 2027. The third component is China's lunar lander, Lanyu. This would also weigh in at around 26 tons and will allow two astronauts to reach the surface of the moon and then return to orbit again. This vehicle is also under development. To live on the moon, it is also necessary to plan for new generation life support systems. And there, as luck would have it, China is just the ideal place to test them, over long periods of non-stop. A beautiful brand new space station. We know that today, after several improvements. They offer much better efficiency in recycling air and water and almost without pressure. The propulsion for the lunar journey. Here too, China is at the forefront. These ionic propulsion technologies or electric propulsion, it's the same thing. Their reliability was demonstrated on several missions. And enabled more efficient transfers to the moon. One last area that is becoming increasingly important. It's artificial intelligence and robotics. Thanks to these two breakthroughs, Chinese engineers are making progress by leaps and bounds in automating many stages that are often repetitive. As a result, the risks for the crews are reduced. And they can thus devote themselves to their main mission. For the future, Chinese laboratories are already doing very well. They are also working on completely new technologies to make the best use of lunar resources. Oxygen extraction from the harvest, water production from polar ice and manufacturing of building materials using lunar soil. China's mission plan to return to the moon is classic, with a strategy reminiscent of the Apollo epic. Because the long March 10th will only be rated for 27 tons to lunar orbit, the execution of this plan will require two separate rocket launches. One long March 10th to send the crewed spacecraft and a second long March 10th to deliver the lunar lander. Then the two vehicles will rendezvous and dock in lunar orbit for crew transfer. After the docking, two astronauts will transfer to the lander for a lunar touchdown. And then, China becomes the second nation to land people on the moon, and they plant a Chinese flag into the ground in the same way that America did back in 1969.
Much like those old Apollo missions, the first Chinese stay on the moon will be relatively short, just around six to eight hours of exploration, sample collection, and conducting experiments. To assist their crew exploring the moon, China has a couple more innovations in the works. To begin with, the initial selection is extremely hard, with very strict physical, intellectual, and psychological criteria. Then, the selected candidates undergo intensive training for several years. This training includes simulations in hostile environments, centrifuge tests to support accelerations, pool exercises to simulate the calming, and extended stays in isolated environments to prepare for the extreme psychological conditions of space missions. Of course, the tailors also receive technical training in concrete on all systems of the ships and the future lunar base. Today, to succeed in a space program, it is not enough to be good at technique, even if that is of course the basis. Partners are also needed. This China thing isn't really that big of a deal because NASA is going to be landing people on the moon by 2026, and they'll have a full Artemis moon base in progress by the time China even arrives. And yes, even when you are a major world power like China. In any case, I can tell you that the Chinese government understood this well. And he has developed a very broad network of international partnerships, which strengthens its spatial capabilities. NASA might not be able to admit that to themselves yet, but the signs of progress are just not there. And if we're looking for signs of progress, then we don't have to look any further than China's ongoing robotic exploration of the lunar surface, which includes not only the familiar regions that have been visited by American astronauts and Soviet landers in the past, China is pioneering exploration of the moon's far side and south pole regions as well. What is less well known is that many scientific exchanges with foreign universities also enrich Chinese space research. All these agreements allow the sharing of data and resources, although U.S. restrictions limit some collaborations. And in the process, they are learning more about the moon than any other nation. The most recent of these missions was the highly successful Chang'e 6, a sample return landing on the far side of the moon, also known as the dark side of the moon, though it's not actually dark and not only was this the first ever soil. Sample return from the far side, Chang'e 6 is also one of the very few lunar landers to successfully land without crashing in recent years. Many have tried and many have failed. Chang'e 6 used several key technologies to descend into a safe spot. A variable thrust engine, optical imagery, onboard maps, hover phases to detect hazards, and shock absorbing. Crushed core legs for the final freefall. Now, in 2024, the long March 9th has been changed yet again to a fully reusable two stage rocket that now looks exactly like a painted version of the SpaceX Starship. From nose to tail. Of course, this is not an art competition, it's spaceflight, so physics is what should be dictating your design choices, not aesthetics, and in theory, there can only be. One correct answer to building the ideal reusable upper stage rocket, and it's looking like SpaceX. Just got there first, and anyone else who wants to compete is just going to have to copy. But, either way, a fully operational Long March 9th or Chinese Starship is going to be necessary to establishing a long term presence on the moon. Even if we can find a reliable source of water and oxygen up there, it's still going to require a spectacular amount of resources and infrastructure to be shipped from the Earth to the moon. So, China has all the right ideas, they are making all the right plans. But the comparison ends there, because Chinese launches are mainly carried out towards the east. And the trajectories of the inhabited flights unfortunately pass over the populations. Pieces of Chinese rockets have even been recovered in Florida. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.